Hi, everyone. I gotta switch back over to here, to over there. Okay, I'm finally here. My um, my name is Julie Kite. I am an independent Stampin' Up demonstrator. I live in Snowflake, Arizona, and it is very cold right now. Um, it's only like 50 degrees outside, and we're dropping down into the low 20s at night. So, a little late. Few eight minutes late. I uh. I, uh, my husband went and got us, um, we have a, like a soda shop in town that does these really cool mixed drink thingies, soda drinks, and he had gotten one, actually got one for me and one for him, and they mistakenly put the coconut flavoring, which was supposed to be in my drink, into his drink, and he's allergic, so I had to run them back real quick so they could fix them. I would have drank mine just fine without it, but his he couldn't drink. So I get something called a beach bum, which is kind of cool, it's Dr. Pepper, uh, coconut flavoring and cream and my husband gets a just peachy which is and he actually gets the diet version which is a diet dr pepper and diet uh peach flavoring so actually pretty good they actually have kind of cool drinks that i like but the beach bomb is my favorite so welcome today to our live yes i know i missed last week um my husband and i uh went on a little mini vacation over the weekend to first laughlin uh, every year, a whole bunch of his friends from high school get together. It's been Laughlin every year, but I guess next year's going to be different. Uh, we get together and spend a few days uh, together. And I'm, I'm the baby in the group because my husband's eight years older than me. I feel like such a baby in the group. Um, and then we extended ours uh, two more days by going from Laughlin up to Vegas. And that was fun. So we just got home really late Tuesday. And now I'm trying to get back into the swing of things of everything else. So that's one reason why I wasn't there and I haven't had a blog post go up since then is because we were gone. And then I missed Thursday's live because my grandson uh, got sick and he had a doctor's appointment that day already. So we took him and he has a cold um, plus allergies and a really bad cough. He's doing much, much better. Um, I have the allergies like there's no tomorrow. I hate taking pills that I don't want to take, but I've got to take out. I haven't had to have to take allergy pills in years. Um, but this year was bad because our lack of monsoon didn't give us our moisture this summer. So everything dried out and is now blowing around in the wind. <laughs> so I'm coughing and sneezing and my eyes hurt. My nose hurts. So if I sneeze, I'm really sorry. Um, so what is going on? Stamping up. The new trimmer that I showed in my last live two weeks ago, this wonderful, wonderful thing, it gets to go to live on customers on November 1st. Because this did uh, so well um, during our demonstrator pre-order, the four pack of blades aren't going to be available until January. But it does come with the scoring blade, which is the light gray. And a cutting blade so you'll have you know you'll, you'll have a, a cutting blade until January at least I mean these last much much longer because they are so much bigger than they used to. it's hard to tell but they're much bigger and, and they're much easier to take on and off and they were killing my hands the other way so that's that's be here November 1st and then also you've probably been hearing about the Christmas time is here Oh my god, I have a flyer. But it's for um there's two stamp sets and dies. And it's really cool because this one's red rubber and this one's photopolymer. But this is the big one. Um these are two of the stamp sets. You get this, there's paper, there's ribbon. The gold ribbon is right here. It's really, really, really pretty gold ribbon. It's really kind of shiny because that thing's in my face. Um, but it's really pretty gold ribbon. There's gold enamel dots. And I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek. I can find them. They're in there somewhere. I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek of a card I did with this set. Right here. Ooh, it's going to be bright. But it's watercolor. I have fun. And the paper that's in the back is actually some of the uh, specialty DSP from the Peacock, Royal Peacock Suite. 
Um, it just looks perfect because it was old olive and it just kind of blended right in nicely. But I didn't use any of the DSP on this one, the designer series paper. I just uh, embossed this in gold and on watercolor paper. And then I it actually took a while. Uh, watercolored the whole thing. Um, I, I did use my Stampin' Blends for the berries because it was so much easier than watercoloring and I just heat embossed and all that. So you guys get a sneak peek of what this is going. This is it's a little better when the light's not shining right on it. But this is coming uh, probably in a blog next week, but you guys get to see it now. So that's coming out and it's a whole, and there's a bracelet and mine's not in here. Hmm. Usually I wear it. Um, but there's a gold bracelet you can get with it too. Is that all that's in that suite? The two stamp sets, the dies, the ribbon, the enamel dots, and they're glittery, gold glittery enamel dots are really pretty. The paper and the bracelet. I think that's it. My brain has not come back to work mode since being on vacation. You ever know that thing about you know need a vacation from your vacation? I need a vacation from my vacation. So I think that's it. Those are the two things coming up. If you are on uh, my newsletter list, you will get a newsletter uh, probably mid-early next week. I'm thinking when it's going to go out. So you'll get all the info on the trimmer and the suite that's coming up. The paper pumpkin, it just mine came while I was gone, which was a bummer. Oh, this is a cute little box that the uh, bracelet comes in. You could totally like upcycle this for something else or give it to a friend. So, I need this stamp set, actually. So, Paper Pumpkin. It's too late to get this one. But this was the one of two that came out. Next one will come next month. They're called the Winter Wonders. There's the little flyer for next month. This month was cards. And we got a Night of Maybe. Um... This one is some really cute cards. If you have not seen this, please look away. But these are them. You probably may have already seen them on different demonstrator sites, but they're really pretty. And next month is going to, I haven't even opened mine yet. That's, <laughs> that's as far as I've gotten is this. Um, next month's paper pumpkin is gonna be tags, Christmas or holiday, whatever, tags, to put on gifts and stuff. So that's actually gonna be pretty cool to use. Just want to let you know, if you are commenting on this, I can't see it until I'm done because of the software I use. Uh, and my phone, which is above, the video is down. I can't go on it to look at Facebook. So if you're commenting, thank you very much. Um, I will get, oh, I didn't pick. Okay. Um, I will get back. If you have any questions or anything, just, just leave a question here in the comments. Uh, please share, like the video so other people can see it too. I had mentioned, I'm going to cough, hold on. <laughs> Ooh, I'm bubbly. I had mentioned um, that I was going to show the, uh, what I was going to do for last week's live. And it was on the tags, 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 because I've been casing the catalog. And let me get the catalogs out when I need them, huh? This one was on page 56. There he is. Those cute ones. Right here. They make uh, nine different tags, which is really cool. There's three for Halloween, three for Christmas or holiday season, and three Valentine's Day ones. And what's really neat about this is they're all, the stamps are all hooked together according to the season. So like these are all the Halloween, these are all the holiday, and these are the uh, Valentine's Day ones. And then when you do it, you stamp them all as one, and I suppose you could cut them apart if you wanted to. And then the die comes all hooked together, so it's perfectly spaced, so you get them all. And then you get these cute little, there's a heart, some pumpkins, and some snowflakes, and they actually, let's come back here, they actually go on the tags themselves. You can place them on. The different spots like um let me show you i've only done the halloween ones because this one was just going to be really quick because i didn't and then they all jumped off my desk and ran away it's funny because i made a pile of everything i needed for today and those got off and ran off oh they're there 
I just did the Halloween ones that were in the catalog that they showed. But let me get back to that page so I can show you. Okay, for I did it a little different. This one looks, I didn't put the, the piece behind it. Oh gosh, it's gonna be so bright. Let me flip it. <laughs> Let me flip the camera. There we go. Okay. This one, it's really easy. You just take a blend or a marker, either or, and you color around the pumpkins and then you offset the little pumpkins on top that you die cut. So cute. This one, I did it just like the one I think I just don't have the string through it. This one I did with the blends too. I just did the line between, and you could do any color combination actually with this one. I just wanted to look like candy corn. So I just blended the orange into the yellow. And then this one I did a little different on colors. I did an orange, it's hard to see the little thing on the back, but it's an orange circle behind it. And that one is, you just do that separately. You know, I just punched out one of the scallop circles uh, in the layering circle dies. And then I, I stamped this again on purple and cut it out. They did it in orange. I did it in purple. So, and then you just color the whole back with the blends. And they're really cute. And then I punched a hole in the top. So, there we go. But they came out really, really cute. You could have so much fun with the different color combinations of these. I'm going to lift them up. But that was the one I was going to do last week. And I would do them all today how I did them, but this one I think is going to take the one I did have planned for today is going to take a little bit long. So I didn't want to waste a lot of time just doing the tag ones. But that was the tag. I did want to show you those were the tags. So let's put that one aside. You know, I didn't tell my husband I was going live. <laughs> it's going to be funny if he walks in. Okay, today's card, get off of there, thank you, is on page 140 of the annual catalog. Uh, my eye itches now. One oh, allergies are so much fun, you know. Okay, so and you can I even have the little thing with it so far. You know, like, okay, it's ten twenty-five. So get this hold up right. This is the card we're doing. It's the top right of page one forty, and I fell in love with it. And I did. I did somewhat the same, just tiny bit difference. But the one I'm going to make live for you guys is going to be a little different colors. So. I'll take that off now. I'll put that over there so I don't lose it like I did last time. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Ouch, my hair got pulled. My hair got pulled. It likes to catch on. The, oh, and I got my hair cut too. It didn't take much off. I took about, actually about seven inches off the back, but because, let me switch over real quick. By my mouse. I took about seven inches off the back. It's still really long. Um, but it was down at a V, so the sides only got like maybe an inch, and so I could straighten it out across the back, but I did get a cut. All right, so let's switch back. Okay, so the first thing, you can see the card here. This is the one I pre-made. I'm going to go ahead and show it now because it's going to be a color difference. The only thing that's going to be different is the uh, cardstock on the back. I did, on the one in the sample in the catalog, they did it on whisper white car stuck but I wanted a little more color but the color of the flower on this one is calypso coral and petal pink and they're both stamped off once I didn't like I did it once before and I didn't like the colors being that bright so I've decided oh here it is I decided to do a little differently see here's the the darker darker version and you got to realize when they do the pictures for the catalogs they have to obviously make them brighter so that um it's it you know you can see all the details in the in the car so they're a little more brighter colored than they would be in real life because this is this one right here is exactly what you know and then i did it lighter so you can actually tell the difference between how light they are but so we're gonna do something a little different all right so i first started with a piece of Whisper White. I have these all these little pieces everywhere. A big piece of Whisper White. This is a four by four by five and a quarter standard. I sometimes I last the time actually make a smaller than that. I make them three and three quarters by five because I usually put a small border, but this one I didn't want to. So 
We're going to start with this. Now, what's fun about this one is this one, and we're going to teach you about masking. And you've probably heard masking before. And that's usually where you take a paper to mark something off. I need a post it. So, what's cool about this one, though, is you don't have to fussy cut like most masks you do because this stamp set, there's the stamps, comes with dies. And no, they don't come this way. I do this myself. I put the uh, magnetic sheet in there and then I label it what it is and how many and then I put them all on. So this does not come this way. I do this myself. And when the stamps retire, I sell them this way. People actually like it. So what's cool about this, being able to mask this rose, is you have a die for the outline of the rose. Yes, it is a tiny bit bigger, but it didn't make much difference on this card. So what you do, and you can tell I've used this mask very well, is you take a post-it, and usually the ones that have the full sticky are the best, but you just make sure that the part with the sticky is at some point of this mask so it sticks to your card when you do it. So let's get our memento out because that's going to be what we use the most of. My mask, and I need this flower first. There's three, this is basically a three-step stamp. Um, you have the, the outline and then the two inside. So I need, I need, I need a block, I need a block. I don't have any of these ready because I have to reuse so many of the blocks. This is E, block E. It's the second to the largest. This is one I use quite a bit. So I'm going to turn a light on. It's going to get a little bright. Not that bright. My mouse. <laughs> um, I just got to make sure there's no cat hairs on it because we know the fun world of me and my cats and cat hair. No matter how hard I try, I can't keep cat hairs off my stamps. And there is a cat hair on this one. And that's why I usually use the light because I hang it up at an angle and I can see where all the cat hairs are. Okay. There we go. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, you don't need the mask to start with. You're going to start, let me get my card, with this flower, the one that's colored. You're going to stamp that one first. And it doesn't have to be exact placement on there. This will actually be easier this way. Because it's a big block. I need to re-ink this one. So, and you can make it go any direction. It doesn't have to max direction or anything. I just did that for reference. So it's going to go in about the middle over a little bit. So let's stamp it there. And if my head gets in the way, I'm very, very, very sorry. I may zoom in on this a little bit. Hold on. Let me zoom in. And I can adjust my camera next. Okay, hold on, everybody. Camera's moving. Of course, now it's crooked, and that's going to drive me crazy. Okay, I'll just move up a little bit. Okay, and we pull that one off, and we have the black. And, of course, there's a cat hair on there because I can see it. Oh, you did cat hair. The thing about cat hairs is, where's it at? It's right there. They ink up too, and of course, they ruin it. So I'm going to clean this off real quick. You know, I'm stamping black again. Just make sure I get all the cat hair off of it. But, oh, there it is. I found it, I found it. It's like hide and go see. There's a few. Oh, there it is. It's a big one, and it was hiding from me. Okay, usually, if you blow and then rub your finger over it, you can usually get them off. Okay, so we're going to take this mask, and the fun part is lining it up, but it's going to be hard to see. There is a dip in one part, and that goes right there. That little top of that, I'm opposite, the top of this little arrow goes right into this little petal thing. And it is going to completely, entirely cover it. So you just kind of, and then some because of the, come back here, you're not down right. So then when next, again, we re-ink our stamp. Let's get this one out of the way. Re-ink our stamp. 
Now this mask is going to cover up the flower I want perfect so that when I stamp this one, it's going to stamp on the mask and not on my flower. And it looks like the flower on top is behind it. So I'm going to put this right here so you can see. We're going to do this flower next. And it can be in any direction. It doesn't have to be the same. And we're going to turn it this way a little bit. And this one's not quite to the top and not quite to the side. And voila. And see what the mask did. Kept it from going onto that one. So we're going to take this again, put it right back where it was. It's funny, when you take time you stamp on this thing, it gets kind of weird. You don't know where it goes. Okay, we're going to lay it down again. Re-ink our stamp. Whoa, after I stick my fingers in it. Dang it. <laughs> I got black fingers. And I have white cardstock. <laughs> don't you love it when you drop an ink pad on your fingers? That's where baby wipes come to the rescue. You have baby wipes in your house, you either have kids or you craft. <laughs> that is for darn sure. If anybody's joining in, welcome, welcome, welcome. I mentioned earlier that if you do any comments or anything or questions, I can't see it until we're done because of the software I use with the two different cameras. Um, I, my phone, I can't look at my phone while it's facing down pointed at this. So that's the hard part. So, okay. It's a nice, nice system to do it, but I can't, unless I want to bring up my eye touch, and I don't want to do that right now. Okay, so the next one, it's underneath the flowers here, so we're going to just turn this around a little bit, and it goes off the card. So you're going to actually be, which is I have why I have the paper here, you're actually going to be stamping off. So this one goes about right here. Actually stamp off a lot on this one, see? And then we're going to pull up the mask, and voila! But we do need it again because we got to stamp the flowers, or the leaves. We're going to clean this one off because we're done with it. Yay, we're done with that one. And put it back on its own. When they're, when they're big, solid stamps like this, boy, they can stick to the box. Which is a good thing if you want them to, but oh, just drop the stamp. Alright, next... Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull off. I'm going to pull off all three leaves. There's actually it's another three. The leaves are a three stamp set too, or three step stamp too. And then I'm going to pull off. There's actually two. You get two, two things because of all the stamps. And then we're going to pull off the other two pieces of the flower. Now, with the stamps like this that do this kind of shading and lighting, these are the two, it's going to be hard to see them, the two backgrounds. Let me show you on this. This is the way they look. The, your darkest color that you're going to use to make up this flower needs to be the one that has the least amount of stamping because it's actually doing the shadows. And you want the highlight or the lighter color that you pick to be that. And actually the two colors I'm using, that out of my way, is the other ones I use Calypso Coral and Petal Pink. These ones are going to be Lovely Lipstick and Flirty Flamingo because I have a rose outside that literally looks like someone took a paint brush and went Phew, and just swiped it. And it's a little darker of a pink than this, but it reminds me so much of my rose. And it just had its last bloom for the season because our temperatures dropped or have dropped below freezing and everything's dying now. Or dead. Mostly everything's dead. <laughs> so I'm going to set those aside because I don't need those just yet. Because we're going to do the leaf. All right, next block. Can never have too many blocks. Okay, I want the the leaf that has the outline. Kind of hard to see it. Let me put it on the block. You can see it that way better. It's the outline of the leaf. And again, we're going to use our mask because we're going to use it several different times this time. We're going to start with this one. And this one is actually, I'm going to put this back. This one's going to be this leaf here. And then we got to stamp two more times on a separate piece of paper because those get punched out. And that's what that's for. So I'm actually going to do that one first. So I'm going to make sure that I can't go on this. And there are dies to cut out the leaf, which is kind of cool. So we're going to do one. I'm totally off the thing. I'm sorry. We're going to do one leaf. 
or one whole leaf. I grew up with a, a house that my parents moved into when I was two years old. They still live in it. Um, the people who previously lived there took all the plants, dug them up, took them all. <laughs> so my mom planted all new plants and stuff when I was two outside. And one of the things that she planted the most of were roses. And she actually has a couple of them still. And that was 47 years ago. <laughs> and there's actually a couple that are still alive. So that she loves. So I've grown up loving flowers, especially roses. Even though rose is not my favorite flower. Um, orchids are. But I'm sure there's no hair. So I'm going to set those aside. And then we're going to stamp on this one. So. It's so much easier to do it with this way, with this one, because it's the felt top thing for this black. And this is the memento. We're not doing any watercolor or anything, so it doesn't need to be any, it doesn't need to be the stays on and all that. See, and this one's behind, so it's going to go kind of like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It really does not have to be perfect. The more random, the better. There's that one. Leave the mask there, because you got to do it again. I think no we need to move it we gotta go down to the next flower and figure out I think it goes this way yeah you spend most of the time turning the mask around trying to figure out which direction it goes on that's the more fun one okay this one goes down here in the corner and it does not have to be precise please remember that this doesn't have to be exact and I'm probably really low on the camera thing and then we're going to do that same one again. Don't move it yet. We're going to ink this up again because there's one on this side too. It's not much, but there is one. And we're just going to go like that. All right. And then we're going to take this up. And kind of went off the edge, but that's okay because that's actually mostly colored or covered by the black circle. And then... goes this way. I'm actually going to turn this around. And this goes here. Now you can if you want to. Oh, that's smudged. Yeah, that's why you don't touch it. Um, you can if you want to actually, you know, stamp the flower and then cut around it and you'll get an exact fit of a mask. But why do that when you've got the ink all over my fingers? When you got the dyes. And now I have ink all over everything. Okay. Because the ink wasn't dry when I touched it. All right, and I'm not doing this again. All right, now this one actually just goes up off the page. Right behind it, however you want to. All right, like that. And now we're done with the mask. Actually, no, I need it one more time. That's right, I need it one more time. First masking the background, the, the leaf. You need it for the leaf. I'm going to clean this one off and my fingers. Okay, I think, yeah, that's it for the black. We're done with the black. Done with the memento. Memento, memento, memento. memento. Next, we're going to do the this leaf and then the two that get die cut. So we're going to start. Now, these ones are a little harder to tell. Where's that thing at? The leaves are as to which one's the darker and the lighter. But the one that has the less, less, crisp edges is the darker one of the two and I have pear pizzazz and old olive and they're actually both stamped off once I think I did remember now oh my stuff is stuck to each other <laughs> so we're gonna start with the lighter and you should do the lighter first and then the darker that's how I usually do it so we're going to it's this one also the one that has the stem it's kind of hard to tell but this one has the stem that's the darker one I love this stamp set it was created it's a million dollar stamp set the person I'm trying to remember the name of who did it because it's not on the stamp she um oh 
Uh, Mary Ellen Byler, she achieved our million dollars in sales. And so once you do that, you get to help design a stamp. And I'm really excited because my upline, Robin, hers comes out next year. It takes a couple years to go through the whole, you know, getting everything, you know, this, 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 and this. this. Okay, now, I did. I didn't stamp off with the pear. I stamped off with the old olive. That's what I did. Okay, so I need the mask again. This thing gets really used. You may want to make a couple so you don't do the boo-boo with the black ink like I did. <laughs> I believe I did that. This goes here. And this is just to protect the flower from the, the leaf part. So we're going to take this, we're going to stamp this, and then we're going to line it up the best we can inside those lines. And stamp it. Voila. Leave it there. Get the rest of the ink off of this one. This one. Oh. And actually, no, actually, leave it on. Leave it on, leave it on, leave it on. While I have this out, <laughs> trying to streamline it here. Let's go ahead and stamp these two. And it doesn't, oh, it absolutely does not need to be exact, people. It does not need to be exact at all. It actually looks really good when it's not. So, and the fact that the photopolymer, you get to see through it and get to line it up. So, okay, clean. Now I'm off. I am done with that one now. So now I need, and whenever you do stamps like this, I put them on top of the ink that they're being used on, so I remember <laughs> which one went to what. That's another P. There's also Crush Curry. That's for the center of the flower. Okay, so this one, that one was that. We need this stamp. We need the mask on here still, so let's do this one. Old Olive. Old Olive is going to be stamped off once, and you've never heard the term stamped off this is what you do you ink it up i'm going to use a spare piece of paper here you can tell where i did a whole bunch you ink it up really good make sure there's no cat hairs in it yep you get up really good come over here stamp off you're going to stamp it down pick it up come over here and line it up that kind of just gives a little shading it's really subtle oh that black smudge is going to bother me Okay, it's actually really, really subtle. So I actually did better with the first one. I <laughs> usually do. Okay, I'm clean the ink off of that. If you have the Stampin' uh, cleaner thing, the little scrub, scrub cleaner, whatever. So I always stamp the ink off of the stamps as much as I can before I clean it. That way I don't have to clean my scrub as much. You know, take the plates out and go in the bathroom and clean them. So, it helps a lot. All right, let's take these off. Done with those, done with those. I need one, we're gonna do the flower next. So I need the dark one, and I need the big block, and the light one. Okay, since this one is more, I'm gonna put you down. Ooh, and I really stick to the desk. I'm kind of, sorry, I'm out of, Thing right now, I'm just putting the stamps on the blocks. That's all. So I have them ready to go. Okay. All right. Close old olive. Let me do in a minute. Let me put you there. Put you there. Put you there. Oh, I hate having a dirty desk, and I'm falling out of my chair all in the same process. All right. We're gonna start with the lighter first, which is the 40 flamingo. And I think what I'm actually gonna do is. I wish I had tested this first. I was trying to see if I wanted to stamp this one off first before I did it. So let's see real quick. Give me a clean piece of paper. It's just printer paper. It's all I use. And hold on to your stamp pad because this is going to pick it up. Because <laughs> it's just so big. I am going to stamp off. I want it to be a much lighter pink. See how dark that is? <laughs> how dark that is. Stamp off, bring it on here, and this is the fun joy of lining it up. Oops. Right there. 
you know, I have to worry about masking, using the mask on this point because it's the top flower of all of them. See how much lighter that is? Well, that much looks better. I like that, actually. <laughs> okay, next I need lipstick. I need to clean off my, just spray my scrub thing. Water. Okay. All right. Also, when you use the any of the stamps, and especially the photopolymer, for the very first time, clean them very well before you use them. It gets the oils and stuff off of there that are just on there naturally from the manufacturing process, and you end up with a much cleaner, crisper stamp. All right, next. Lovely lipstick. And I'm thinking I'm actually going to keep this full strength. We'll see. Here real quick. This is actually my favorite color. <laughs> Lovely in a room. This is this last year. Um, Lovely lipstick is my favorite color. No, I think I'm going to leave it full strength. Okay, let's put it on. Let's be adventurous. All right. Now, this one's a little more tricky on the lining up thing because you, you have really no idea. But when you look at this, this is up straight because it has this little point that points out here and that actually goes into this point right here. So you may actually see my head a little bit because this has got to be straight. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's nice that you can see through. So you know exactly where to line it up, and voila. Oh, actually, I kind of like that. It does look like my rose. <laughs> this is about what my rose looks like. So, still mad at that black smudge. Now, the red ones, I especially recommend stamping off first before you clean it, because look what it, I do not want all that red on my cleaner. And yes, the photopolymer naturally stains. It's just a process you can use some of the new cleaner, which is a stamping cleaning pad. It helps keep it from happening, but honestly, it doesn't bother me, but you can. It doesn't take it all off, but it will make it a lot nicer. The thing is, is when you use this for photopolymer, you have to rinse it off with water immediately. So I usually keep a that and a baby wipe. Don't do it on the paper. But what I do is I put it off a little like this, and then I just spray so it just rinses down onto the baby wipe like that. And then I'm going to do this a little off camera, but I'm just cleaning off the stamp. And then once you've got it cleaned off, then do it back on the scrub. And it's not as pink as it was before. So you, you have to do it right after stamping, though. I mean, I have taken some stamps and tried to clean them, you know, much, you know, after long after they've been done, you know, stamps like from a year ago, I tried to use, sorry, tried to use that and it, it took some off, but not enough to make much of a difference. So you do have to do it pretty immediately. And there's also, are they on this one? This one's pretty easy to line up. Sometimes they have arrows, but it's pretty easy actually to line this one up. All right. So we're gonna let that sit for a second and dry. That lovely lipstick is thick. And we're going to die cut out our little lubes. Oh, well, my ink pad's out of the way. Find my, there they are. Find my leaves. And we're going to get the stamp set. And the leaf die looks just like that. This is gonna be off screen because my big shot is Oh, right there. So it's too hard to have it in the middle of my screen. And now we're going to I also want to say anybody out there who's been following me, watching me doing the casing of the catalog stuff, if there's ever a card or something you see in the in the catalogs that you would like to like, how the heck did they do that? I'd be more than willing to take suggestions on projects you would like to see, you know, out of the two catalogs, you know, when the holiday ends and then it's the occasions catalog and even the celebration. I may not have the stamp set necessarily that, you know, is used, 
but I can use, you know, I can always substitute a different one. But if it's, you know, like, oh my gosh, how did they do that? Or it's more like a technique or something, I'd be more than willing to, to show you how. So, like on this masking one. All right, got our two leaves. All right, and actually one of them we need to cut. Those out of my way. Get those out of my way. Okay, we need to cut. I lost all there. Just one of the leaves. Why you can still tell that? All right. Just look weird. These two go. They'll go under like this right here, like on the other one. So with this one, scissors. This one, I don't want the. Oh, that black just did not. Ugh. Okay. So it will kind of go like that. Oh, where's my card? I cut off the inside leaf. So on this one right here, I'm going to cut this leaf off here. So I'm going to turn it around, and I'm just going to follow straight down the stem. And that's just so because I, the way that's positioned underneath it, I don't. It doesn't show, so I wouldn't really want to have to glue down one more thing. So, so the next thing we're going to do is the sentiment for this. And they did this one a little tricky as well. So I thought it would be yeah, like a great time to show you how they did this. And it's, it is actually more masking, um, but it doesn't involve using the dies this time. Okay. On the front of this card, there's the hello friend, and it's heat embossed. I'm going to heat emboss for you. You're going to wonder, how in the heck did they do this? Because there's no stamp on there that just says friends. So what they actually did is they took a stamp and masked off part of the word to just get the friend. It's the one stamp that says to be your friend. It's kind of hard to see. This one says, it says to be your friend. There we go. It's not on here, right? There we go. And then the other one is the hello. So, black cardstock. You can tell where I did the other one. <laughs> I'm just going to take a piece of black cardstock. Now, when you're heating embossing on especially black, I highly recommend you get the embossing buddy because, especially if you live in an area that's very dry, um, not a lot of moisture, because that's the, the embossing powder just goes everywhere and sticks to everything in places you don't want it. Who's getting these ready? This is kind of a kind of move fast thing. But there's the embossing. I store my embossing powders in these cute little thing I got from Dollar Tree. They're only in our area. They only come out in the spring, and they come in different colors. I usually get the pink ones, but there's like three or four containers of the because it's the one I use the most, the white. There's like three or four containers in this. I always keep it stocked up because I use it so often. Last thing I want to do is you know trying to scrunch down to get the bottom stuff. And then on the top, I label it SU for Stampin' Up White, because I do have some non-Stampin' Up White that I use for scrapbooking and stuff. SU White, and then I put the item number, so when I need to reorder it, I don't have to go looking for the item number somewhere. So that's how I do those. And I have them for all of the embossing powders that way. I just got powder all over my desk. That way, and I always, I always put them into these things, and I'll show you exactly why as soon as I do this. So the first thing we're going to do... I'm going to show you how to mask this. Now, it's easiest to do on a big block so you can line it up better. So we're going to lay this down. And I'm going to do it at an angle. You're going to take any kind of masking or any kind of washi tape. Even masking tape would work. Um, any kind of washi tape. You know, I have tons of this stuff. So, And I'm going to pull off two pieces. Now, if you're really good, you could probably get the Versamark stuff on this without hitting the other words this is kind of hard to show because i've got to be able to see it. so what i'm doing is i'm taking the masking tape and i'm going next to the word friend if i can see it and i'm going to mask off the word your and then right next to it that's just to give me a buffer you could only, you could just use one if you wanted to but it's enough to give me a buffer and then i'm going to make sure that this is not hold on sticking out at all because I don't want any versa mark on the rest of the stamp. Now you got to remember that when you do this, I'm not going to do this one first. I'm just pulling it up so it's easier to pull off when it comes time. 
Don't you pull this off before you stamp down onto the cardstock? Are you going to end up with a big mess? Okay, so first thing we're going to do is take our bossing, embossing butter, and I keep mine in a little plastic envelope so it doesn't go everywhere. Just lay it down. What it is, it's basically filled with a powder, and you can see, you can, I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of a shade difference. But this keeps that, take some of this off. This keeps that embossing powder from sticking to all of the cardstock where you don't want it, except on the Versa mark. The black, you can see it the most because it's black and this is white. So, then we're going to take our Hello Stamp. Whoa. Oh, well, I just made a mess. Thank you. Okay, we're going to have fun picking that up. All right. No cat hair on this. Now, a Versa Mark stamp pad is basically, it's a watermark stamp. You can stamp on here and it, it, it takes a little longer to dry um but you can stamp on here and you'll get like a darker version of the cardstock but it's mostly used for heat embossing so it is a very sticky ink clear ink very sticky ink so you just make sure you get it on there i'm just making sure there's no cat hairs and then i'm just going to kind of do it in the middle because i need to make sure i have enough room for the circle I'm sorry if I'm out of view. It's kind of hard to, you can't really tell <laughs> because it's kind of dark. Uh, you can kind of see it right there. But I'm going to take my messy embossing powder now. And I'm just going to, this is why I do this, so I don't have to pour on. But I just do it right over the top. Take it off. Get the stuff off the side. Pour some on. Take it back off. Don't do anything yet because we're going to stamp our bottom half. Get out of my way. Now, this is where we come up with the other one. Our masked off thing, you can go ahead and stamp on there because the mask, the masking, or the washi tape is hiding the rest of the word. Make sure there's no hair. And then I take them and I pull off this because I don't want, because this has got Versamark on it too. I don't want it on my cardstock. And then I'm going to line up friend right under the hello. So, actually, hold on a minute. This is actually. You know, line it up and it does not have to be perfect if you want it perfect you don't have to buy it at the store oh why did the rest of it do it that's weird okay so now we're going to do this again it looks like part of it didn't get covered but that's okay because there's another trick to this you can see it didn't cover it exactly but that's okay i'll show you how to do that we're getting a whole bunch of techniques today. So if you ever not get it correctly on there, you take a paintbrush and you just kind of make sure you don't touch it and you blow it. It works best if you blow. But the thing is, is with the white on the black, anywhere that any of those little specks go, they're going to obviously show up when you heat emboss this. I'm just looking under the light so I can tell if I need to take any more. And even with the embossing buddy, you're still going to get little strays. Oh, and then I hit it with a brush. So I kind of made my hello go bye-bye. So if you ever do that, just pour a little more on and check it off. And there it is again. I'm trying to keep this from a little too far. And if the brush doesn't work, you know, sometimes I use my tweezers if it's like one little speck and it's too close to the word. Okay. All right. Heat gun time. This may get a little loud. I am sorry if it does. Let it warm up for a couple seconds. Just be clean. Just be clean. And make sure that's away from the heat gun or you will melt that. Now this may be a little hard to show as it changes, but it's gonna get brighter. The white really gets bright. Just like that. How quick and easy that was. Just like that. Close my printer so I can put my heat gun away. Give it a few seconds to dry because it is very hot. Trust me, I've hit it with my hand. 
It's, it's not delightful at all. While I'm waiting, I'm going to clean this up real quick. This big mess I just made on my thing. All my supplies out. Of course, now my thing's not going to be straight. So, usually people will do this over a piece of paper, and so then they just pick the paper up. Usually you do it on a smaller piece of paper, but fold it in half. I don't need to crease it because it's pretty right there. And then you just pop it back in. You don't want to waste the stuff. I mean, it's not expensive, but you don't want to waste it. Now, get the rest off my desk. And white's on white, so of course I can't see it. So get the rest off of this. So it's not sticking to everything else. All right. I will say that if you do, please uh, like and share my video. Facebook is such a wonderful world, and I won't know who does. But if you do like and share it, you're going to be entered into a drawing to win the card. And it's probably going to be the one I already made because it's the less. This has to be straightened in the camera. It will drive me crazy. Um, that's why the tape's on the corner. I will send you the card I made for free. Now, once it's all done, and of course the bossing bunny being a white powder shows up on black car stuff real well. Once it's done and it's cool, I usually just wipe it off on my pants. On my jeans and it comes right off and then I'm gonna get the washing powder off of my spoon massage if it's really really dry outside I will put the a spoon in with the embossing buddy too it's just so the powder doesn't stick so much to it get all the corners I'm just getting the rest of it off there we go ta-da Goes back in its little container and it's all done. And of course, I still have more all over my desk again. It's like glitter. <laughs> At least this doesn't sparkle on your face in weird times. You ever watch something on TV? Some person has glitter on their face and it drives you crazy? <laughs> I've done that. I'm like, please, please, somebody, makeup artist, come find those. Get the glitter off the face. Because <laughs> now I'm totally distracted by the glitter on her face. I'm clean these stamps real quick. And that's how you mask off words on different statements. If you only like want one word off of it or something, that's how you do it. So now we're going to die cut this piece. And I have got, I'm going to throw it. It's the stitch dies. It comes with the circles, the squares, and the ovals. And this is, I think, the second to the smallest. So we're just going to line it up on there. And you can change this color out too. I like the black because it goes with the outline of the flowers. We're going to stick it in our die. Big shot. Now I got out cardstock for the base, but I hadn't decided which color I wanted to use yet. So we're going to pick that. There's that piece. And there we go. Now we have our little circle. And now we're going to put this together. Okay, so what do we think? Hmm. Goes out of my way. Hmm. It looks good on there. Hmm. Kind of like it on the lovely lipstick better. All right, this one I just need to score real quick. A little bit really. Line it up to four and a quarter. Scoring blade, and there has been many a times when I've scored something when I meant to cut it, and cut things when I meant to score them. Hold this. Bone folder. Okay. All right. This piece gets put down just flat. So we'll get our snail. Oh, of course, it has cat hair all over it, too. I can clean the cat hair off my desk, and two minutes later, it's back. Hmm. Okay. We're going to put snail around all four edges. If this had any kind of, going on any kind of layer, I, I would use a tear and tape instead. So... 
I am not happy that I messed up on that black. It's gonna drive me crazy. I'm gonna have to make another one. Because I do like this color. I just don't like that black booby right there. You probably can't see it very well. There you go. Now you can see the little black boo-boo. <laughs> That's why you wait for it to dry before you touch it. All right. Now this gets dimensionals, and they actually get a little of each. I need both. I love dimensionals. So we're going to put one, two, three on that one. And then I remember which leaf gets this. This gets one, and then we get the little ones out, the minis. I mean, you can just cut the big ones if you want, but this is so much easier. Cut one, oops, on the tip of that. Big one there, little one there. This is the one that has the two leaves. And on this one with the three leaves, only gets it on the one that stands to the top. The rest gets to go down. Oh, wait a minute, I need these. And then this, because there's never enough dimensionals on this thing. We'll put them over here too. Dimensional counter. Okay, so first off, we're gonna take these. Oh, I need glue. Multi-purpose glue. Just gonna run it around on this one. This leaf, the stem, a little bit of this one. And then take our little backing off. Now the advantage of putting that base on the card first, it makes it easier to tell how far off the edge I can go with these. Okay, so this one goes about right here. Let me get glued down. That one pops up. I want it to pop up. This one, I'm going to take these off first. Dimensional vacuums everywhere. I always have to make sure I vacuum before my grandson comes over because he will definitely put these in his mouth. I'm just putting it along the stem point so the stem just has a little glue. That's all. And this one, this one does actually go off the edge a little bit. It gets turned. No worry, because the stem is behind the behind the, the little circle. It goes like that. Okay, push this one down. And then we're gonna take the backings off of this. I guess we can put the lid back on the glue. For a second. Now, on the original, they used the um, iridescent sequence, assortment sequence. But I don't think, I guess we could use the lighter pink in that one, couldn't we? Okay, we'll do that. Uh, you don't, yours off. You ever wonder if one doesn't have it without having to touch it? Just look in a mirror. If it's shiny, then it's missing. Okay, I'm going to have to look at this to make sure this gets straight. Like, turn it up a little bit more. So perfect. There we go. Get my dimensional backings out of my way. There's that one. So what I'm going to do is this one does have because it's got the calypso coral, which is what's used on the other one. I'll show you. It does have the Calypso coral sequin assortment thingies on there. So, all right, so let's do this and then we're, um, we're done. So, I need tweezers. Or you can use the pick tool. I'm just so used to using my tweezers all the time. So, it's really hard for me to change. Oh, yeah, the pink look good. I need some little ones, though. Where's the little pink? Little pink. Oh, yeah, you have to be a pain right now, don't you? Static doesn't help. We need two small, two medium, and a large. There's another little one. You can put these wherever you want. I'm just matching it with the one I did. So I need medium. Oh, I didn't do one more thing. You can do it without it. I need medium. There's three different sizes of each color. There's a large. It's a medium. A large, a medium, and a small. The smalls are small. And they come in all different colors. It's a medium. And a small. Okay. 
one thing I forgot to do, I did forget to do, I did forget to do this, and I can do it because there's nothing in the way right this moment. I need the center of the flower. <gasps> I can't believe I forgot the center of the flower. Oh my gosh. Okay. Is that block? This is easy because there's nothing blocking it. So we just do this. It's crushed curry. We put it over the center and stamp down, and it gives it a little yellow. <laughs> you don't have to if you don't want to. I just think it's pretty. I almost forgot that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now we're going to take our glue and I'm going to have to pick this up because I can't move away. Tiny little things. Okay, this one goes right here. You just put a tiny bit. You don't need a lot. Whoa, and I just lost it. Okay. Let go, let go, let go. That one goes there. There it is. Lost my little sequin. And then this one, the big one. Big one goes about right here. And you really can just put these wherever you want. You don't have to follow what I do. I need one right here. Or one of the mediums. And you should always have an odd number. So it just makes it looks aesthetically correct. If you space them far enough apart, you can't really tell. This one goes inside this leaf right there. And the last one goes inside this flower. That's actually going to look really pretty contrasted against it. So. There we go. There it is. It is done. And you can stamp the inside. I'll show you the other one. I did stamp the inside of this one. They don't show us the insides in the catalogs and stuff. So, But I just did the exact same technique with the leaves that I did for the outside and just put the white in there. You should always, if you have, I mean, this one's not too bad, so you can read. But you'd always put, especially with the dark ones, I don't want to touch because it was just a loose, put a white piece of, or a piece of Whisper White in there to make it easier to write on. So, but there it is. All done. It's kind of hard to see the cute little sequins. But you could take some Winkastella and put it on here and make it really pretty. I still hate that little boo-boo. But, uh, hey, can't be perfect all the time, right? So, I'm going to switch my camera back so not my fingers have glue on them and stick them to everything else. Woohoo! I was trying to keep this under an hour, or at least no more than an hour, so I'm actually typically good today. It's funny the fact that I did a whole bunch. All right. My mouse does not like this thing. So let's transition back. <gasps> there we are. So show this a little better this time. I don't want to pump those sequins. Oops. There they are. There's the two of them. This one's done just like in the catalog, and then this was my own kind of. Hold on. That's why. Ha. This one's my own kind of color creation thing. So they look really cool. So anybody who, who comments that you've shared or liked my video, I'm going to send you this one for free. You know, just I'll contact you and get your address and send it out to you. You have until next Thursday. I pick them on Thursdays one beer before I do the lives. You have until next Thursday uh, to enter to get this card. I will send it to you and I'll even leave it blank inside so you can send it to somebody else. Pass it on. So thank you very much for coming today. If you would like to order any of the items I have, I will have a blog post going up tomorrow morning uh, with pictures of the both cards and everything I used to make this. This video will also be going on to YouTube as well as being on here on Facebook. So if there's anything here that you saw that you liked, uh, I will try to have it listed. If I don't, just con ask a question. Hey, what was that? You know, if you'd like to purchase any of it, you can go to uh, Julie Kite, J-U-L-I-E, k-i-g-h-t dot com there's a link there for shop or you can go to scrap and mom s-c-r-a-p-n-m-o-m at stampin up dot net uh, and order there i will have links in all the videos in all the places so you can find it later <laughs> that's a lot of information i also have it if you notice it's in the bottom corner of my um little windowy thingy my address my blog ha ah, get the word out so, alrighty. So, thank you very much. My throat is now sore. I hate allergies. I hate them. I hate them. <laughs> so, 
thank you very much for coming today. Uh, I think that's it. If you have any questions, if you'd like to be part of my newsletter, there is a thing on my blog at the top. There's a whole bunch of little window things. You click the more. I think it's that one. Sign up for newsletter. Put your email information in, and you'll get my newsletter. I usually send one out at least a month. Sometimes things get missed depending on what's going on in my life, but I usually try at least once a month. I'll put up pictures of the cards I've made on my blog, information, just exclusive stuff sometimes. I'll put in a tutorial about how I do things. So thank you very much for coming. And I will talk to you guys later. Any questions, please ask. Thank you so much for coming today. And I hope you have a great rest of your evening. I will be back here next week. Still 5 p five Pacific Daylight Time because that Saturday we changed time and it'll actually bump me down an hour. Time change is crazy. So thank you very much for coming today. I will see you guys next week. Have a great day. Great weekend. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.